In today's video, we will talk about how to extract useful information from a cricket commentary and how to leverage a large language model for that. In fact, we are going to fine tune a large language model, in this case an open AI model for it. What is a cricket commentary? It is a textual description, a very vivid description about a single delivery. When the bowler bowls it, what kind of ball it is? What kind of sort the batsman played? The batsman got out, if got out in what manner? If not, how many runs he scored? And what position the ball got fielded? At what fielding position? Who fielded it? So many important information is actually embedded into that vivid description of that particular commentary. Now, every ball is explained or described in a different way by using creative writing for those writers who write those commentaries. Now, can I extract useful information in a very structured manner and leverage that to find great insights? Like Rohit Sarma, what kind of sorts he prefers or plays for a certain type of bowl. So, to do that, what we'll do is, let's look at a few examples first. Now, here is a commentary which says, Bumrah to Cummins. Hits for a six. It's an innocuous, lazy delivery, back of a length delivery. But Cummins swipes across the line and over short fine leg. So here again, Chawla to Reina, not one of his best, quicker delivery on the stumps. Now, Reina played a flick and sent it along the deep mid wicket. Now, if you look at all this commentary, very different way they are explained, the delivery, but there are a lot of useful information. And if you can extract that, for example, you can extract that using a JSON schema so, is the first ball, who is the bowler, who is the batsman, how many runs score, is the batsman out, if out, what kind of wicket type it is, what kind of stroke the batsman played, what was the bowling type, where actually it fielded, the fielding position, who fielded, caught by, all this information can be extracted. But it cannot be extracted through a deterministic programming way because the descriptions are very different. So we are going to leverage large language model, in this case OpenAI, to extract this information. Of course, the more capable model, the larger models like GPT-40 can extract this information very beautifully. But can we also leverage a smaller model like GPT-4 mini to extract similar quality of information? So in this case, what we'll do is, we'll use a more capable model, like a GPT-4O, to extract this information for few samples, few examples, by providing the JSON schema and Pydantic class. And then we are going to use that information to fine tune a smaller model, and use that model to actually extract the remaining of the samples data. So let's go through a three-step process First, we are going to generate the instruction data set and then we are going to fine tune a smaller model. For generating instruction data set, we are going to use GPT-40. Then we are going to fine tune a smaller model GPT-4 mini and then we are going to also validate and see whether the fine tune process improvises the performance, improves the performance of the model. So let's go through the implementation the code walkthrough. I am going to share the link to the GitHub also. This contains three uh, folders under source directory. One for data generation, one for fine tuning and the third one is for evaluation of the mo fine tuned model. Under data, there are two files, generate. So let us look at that, how do we actually generate data. So two things we need, we need a larger or more capable model and then we also need to define in what format the response would be returned from the large language model. 
So I'm going to define a pedantic class, cricket info, and define the fields. Like we need the bowler. Who is the bowler? Batsman, run scored, is out. In that ball is a bullion. It's a true or false. The wicket type, whether it's a court or a bowl or a stump. The batsman shot type, what kind of stroke the batsman played. The bowling type. The fielding position fielded by and caught by. Almost all are string, except the run scored, which is an integer value, and is out is true or false. Whether the batsman is actually out in that delivery or not. And once you define this, then I'm going to go through the commentary data, which is actually in a CSV file. There are about thousand thousand five hundred commentary for this particular demo. and run through each commentary and pass that through a large language model so in this case i'm going to use a large language model gpt 4o 2024 which is a latest model and pass the commentary and get a response format which is nothing but a pedantic class the cricket commentary commentary info but before passing the commentary i have to also format the request so how this particular for request has to be formatted the open ai expects this to be sent in this particular format so the role is system and this is the system message the instruction and this is the actual uh, role is user the actual commentary so what is the system message so you are a cricket analyst who extracts information from the commentary text and this is the actual so we are going to uh, change this particular content for every diff, uh, commentary and um, so system message and commentary and pass that to the large language model so there are um, we are going to read the csv file which is the commentary all the commentary here and then going to sample it as of now i'm not going to go through in this example through all the commentary only few samples i'm going to show you so i'm going to you can pass that as a parameter then get cricketry commentary info which is nothing but <coughs> iterating through all the samples and i'm going to store that into once i get the response back i'm also going to format the request and response so once i get the json back i'm going to have to store that into a file and in what format it has to be stored in this particular format so messages what is the system message what's the user message and then what the response from the assistant which is a large language model you can see this is the response in the json format this is an example so i'm going to return uh, that in json format and going to store that in a json format what is a json l format let's look at this uh, in the fine tuning guide for the open ai it says of a fine tuning the model the data format preparing your data set that the data format has to be in a json which is of course we are doing it it should contain the system message the user message and the assistant is the response of the uh, model but it has to be in a single line json l is every json should be in one single line so that's of course we are going to implement this we are going to iterate through all the responses that we have gotten for all the commentary and then going to store it with a new line uh, character and once this is done we're going to run this let's say python generate py read each um read the commentary from this particular file about 10 samples just for demonstration and store that into jsonl format so let's quickly run it i'm going to also store that in a csv format for further processing so you can see now it talks to open ai model and uh, 
processes it. So once it's processed, we can see there is a file got created here, which is comment demo one JSON format. And then we can see that <coughs> this is created here. Now this is same as what uh, OpenAI expects as for the documentation. And now we can use this particular JSONL file to fine tune a smaller model like OpenAI uh, GPT-4 mini model. It's also important that we kind of find out if there are any errors in the data, validate the data and how much of data we are going to use to uh, fine tune uh, how many tokens so you can have a initial estimation of what the cost of fine tuning could be. For this, uh, there is already a blog in OpenAI. Uh, this is a beautiful blog written by Michael and Simon here. So I have leveraged their code here to kind of uh, you know, ensure that the generated instruction data is accurate as per requirements and also estimate some initial uh, estimation of the number of tokens that will be used for the fine tuning. So I have taken the code here and uh, put that into validate and I have also mentioned here uh, the blog from which the code is taken and we can simply run this code against so python validate py and you simply provide the jsonl file and then if you run it you see it actually ran that and found that there are about 10 samples are there and then gives an example of how the sample one sample looks like and say no errors found so that's good then you can use that for uh, fine tuning and also gives some statistics about it for example the distribution of number of tokens per example so each example based on the text data how many tokens are there say about uh, mean and median is about 208, 198 um, and then it also tells you that you will be charged for total for the 10 samples about 20,890 tokens if you are going to train for 10 epochs. For fine tuning, we can either use the OpenAI's dashboard user interface which is much easier to use or you can also use OpenAI API if you want to automate the whole process of fine tuning. We will look at both. So under OpenAI's dashboard there is a fine tuning link there and on the fine tuning page we can use create then select a base model which particular model you will fine tune. In our case we will use the, the GPT-4 O mini. And then you can upload our JSONL file here. Either you can upload here or if you have already uploaded under storage, you can use the file ID. And then uh, we can use a random sheet for reproducibility, not required. We can use a batch size and the number of epochs. So batch size you can set to maybe the default. The number of epochs typically you can set it to a less number of epochs like probably two or three and then you can say create and once you create it's going to start a fine tuning job and provide a fine tuning job id and you can observe the state the status of the fine tuning process here for of course automating the whole process of fine tuning we can use the open ai apis so we created a file called fine-tune.py under fine-tune directory. So let's look at that. Um, it has got three methods. One is upload the file. You can give the file name, which is your instruction data set, the JSONL file. So the file gets created, client files create. The purpose is fine-tune and it of course returns a file ID. And then create the fine tune job. So, woman, you give the fine tune, uh, the JSONL file ID that is uploaded, and the model 
the base model which has to be fine tuned then it creates a fine tuning job create the training file you can also pass the um, the evaluation file itself but i'm going to do it separately the base model and any hyper parameter for example i'm going to run the fine tune process only for two epochs and a batch size of eight so every iteration takes only eight samples and then there's a third method called monitor the fine tune job which every 30 seconds it looks at what is the current status of the job if the status is either failed succeeded or cancelled is going to come out of the monitoring and print the the latest the final state status of the job or it's going to print the intermediate state and go back again wait for 30 seconds and check the status of the job so we can run this job uh, you can call fine tune py and give the base model and the instruction data set so i have done it here it's going to take some time so i have done it here already so you can see once you run this it says starting the fine tuning process and the fine tune job is created that's a fine tuning job id and it goes in a loop every 30 seconds look at the status and finally succeeded the job is successfully completed um, also when the fine tuning job starts you can always go back to the the fine tuning dashboard and it also look at the the status here um, and you can see this is the job that's created and um, the created fine tuning job validating training file so it also validates before the training process starts uh, the file validated that means it's successful moving to the, the job to the queued state so fine tuning job and then the fine tuning process successfully completed uh, this is the base model and this is the final model that got created the fine tuned model which of course we are going to use it ultimately and then it also shows the number of epochs and um, uh, interestingly it also shows the uh, the loss the training loss so like let's look at one one before because we are using only 10 samples the not much of learning I'm going to uh, show you a fine-tuned job where I have used thousand samples and uh, you can see the training loss uh, so it has reduced over a few iterations and that means it basically showing that the model is learning and after some time the model actually has the loss has stabilized fairly that means the model has reached its, op reached its optimal state and of course you can leverage this model so once you the job is complete the fine tuning is done and the fine tune model is available and we can use this fine tune model name now to make inference we need uh, three important information here one is the ground truth so whatever structured information are returned by the the larger model the gpt40 the more capable model will take that as a ground truth and then we'll invoke both the base model which is gpt4 mini and the fine tune model and compare it with the ground truth and see if the fine tune model has a better accuracy compared to the base model now how do we compare it now let's say this is the ground truth written by the more capable model which returns what's a bowler batsman run scored and all that and this is the instruction this is the structured information written by the either the base model or the fine tune model so we are going to compare at each field position like is the bowler same is the batsman same is the run score same of course we will do a case insensitive analysis in this case the case is not important um, for example here the bowler looks correct the batsman looks correct but the wicket type which is caught and bold but it only says caught so this is not correct so we look at at every field level every information level what is the accuracy of that there is no straightforward evaluation matrix for uh, 
this kind of job of course you can define your own matrix so i decided to use the accuracy at every field level and see if every field level whatever the accuracy of the base model have we improved it for the fine tune model by fine tuning it so there's a method called evaluate.py first i'm going to run through the the base model which is gpt4 mini and then of course I'm going to run it through the gpt4 mini uh, the fine tuned model that we have used this is again going to invoke the model go through the file and return the json format and once you've done it if we look at the uh, results right so this is the base model i have run it for 200 samples and this is the base model accuracy so you can see uh, there are few positions few information which is very well retrieved like a run scored bowler the batsman the wicket type and all that but for few things like a batsman shot type uh, the fielding position uh, and in the bowling type it is about 0.51 0 0.50 and all that but after the fine tune the fine tune model you can see for about 1000 samples i have improved improved the performance it's reached a uh, uh, 60 percent is 0.89 you can see across different fields there is an improvement in the accuracy of the model okay uh, of course there are also a, one example where the accuracy has gone down the bowling type um, this probably because the quality of the sample is not good we might have to improvise the instruction data set itself but overall you can see the fine tuning uh, process actually has improved the model's performance um, so you can see you know um, to of course fine tuning is not a one step process you can all, always fine tune you can evaluate look at the matrix and look at what improvements you can do either improving the data quality or maybe you know increasing the number of epochs or more number of samples right and then uh, also kind of play around with hyperparameters but most of the times is always if increasing the data quality the instruction data set typically improves the performance of the fine-tuned model i have written three blocks very detailed blocks um, the part one is the fine-tuning open AI models part one is data generation part two is a model fine-tuning or training and part three is a model evaluation so you can actually use this blocks to go in detail so please go through the blogs the video and the github and uh, happy fine tuning and see you next time with another video thank you